Representative Campfield, you're recognized on House Bill 3019. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members of the committee. What House Bill 3019 will do as amended, it's a homeschool bill. What this bill will do is say a lot of times there's varying codes and uh, in between uh, state and local municipalities on what are the fire codes and what certain situations fall under. Uh, a lot of homeschools use churches, and I'm going to use churches as a general example, but they, a lot of them use homes also, where uh, students will gather and possibly, like in Oak Ridge, they, have, uh, they might bring in someone who specializes in a certain section of knowledge, something like physics or something like that. They might have someone from Oak Ridge come in and, and teach a group of homeschool students uh, on a specialty issue. Uh, they may use churches, um, meeting halls, and things along those lines. Some people even use homes. And um, these groups, a lot of times, they are incorporated. They use the names of, uh, I have a letter here from one lady. Um, she calls herself the Sunrise Learning Center. It's really just her and her three children that she homeschools. But she has to have an official name so she can get discounts and buy books and stuff like that through the mail and on the internet. What she's had a problem with and other people around the state have had problems with are some local municipalities are coming in saying, well, you, since you're meeting, you're calling yourself a school, you must meet the standards, the fire safety standards of a school, uh, which is a much higher standard than most homes are or most churches are. What my bill will do is say they will have to meet the primary standards of the where the location that they are in. So if they're in a church, they have to meet the fire and safety standards of a church. If they're in a theater, they have to meet the fire and safety standards of a theater. If they're in a house, they have to meet the fire and safety standards of a house and not have to meet the fire and safety standards of a school instead. Okay. We have a motion on the bill. Second, Second on the motion. Any amendments? There is an amendment. It uh, really just, it's an amendment. No, we, don't have, we don't have a copy of the amendment in our packet. Uh, amendment number zero one five seven three one six one. Does anybody have that amendment in their packet? They're not on small. I don't see it in mine. Is it got a drafting code and everything? You want to look at this? Uh, okay. Okay. Representative Montgomery. Uh, Representative Campbell, I guess the uh, question I would have, and I'm I'm all for helping homeschoolers. They know that, and uh, they are a special group of people that that have the. Uh, the uh, drive about them to want to work with their children, and I, I, I appreciate that. Uh, but what I guess is my, my question is this, where you get into a temporary situation where you're going over and meeting in a church uh, temporarily, uh, you know, to bring somebody in and educate a group of homeschoolers uh, versus some where they, they go to this place on a con consistent basis and there's, say, 25 or 30 homeschool children going to a to a, uh, a particular place uh, constantly, then, then you're kind of in a school environment versus, versus a temporary thing where they just might do it once or twice or three times and then go somewhere else. Yes, those situations do occur. I'm not going to deny it. There are places that where, a teach, or where a parent may not have a specialty knowledge in a science or something along those lines or advanced mathematics. And they may, like I said, that's, that's pretty much the purpose that they do these for. Mm -hmm. uh, but what we're saying, or what my bill would be saying is, whatever the primary use of the facility is. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it's primarily used for a church, it should meet that standard. But if it's, you know, primary use is really just a school and the church is just a auxiliary use, it would not have to, it would not be held to that standard. Okay. Okay. Uh, I, I, I know the sponsor turned in the amendment in time, and I don't really, I do apologize, we don't have it. 
but Sally says it's basically just a very technical correction. It doesn't substantially change your motion or your bill or any, in any way. So if, if it's okay with the – okay. We have a motion on the amendment and a second. You want to you tell us, Sally, what – Basically what it's doing is saying that this, this law is – is going to control and that no local ordinance enacted later could supersede or preempt. Or, so it's basically saying this is going to be the law and you can't enact something that's going to supersede what we're doing right here. That's really what it's doing. Yep. And in discussion, Representative McCord, did you have something? Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, regardless, this will be rolled. We'll get the amendment and it will we're, be We're going to vote on it, I think, today. Yeah, uh, it'll be rolled. But one thing I'd just like to offer. No, it'll, it'll be it'll – be, Move to full committee. The technical. Oh, um, I heard. Okay, I'll, I'll just come back after we get the amendment and get on the bill. Without objection, we if if it's in, without objection to the committee, we will vote on the amendment and adopt it if that's what you choose, and we can refer it to full committee unless there's objection. I know. I know our policy. And I, if we feel like as a, as a committee we need to hold it, then that's what we'll do. So just please tell me what to do.